I'm going to start with prayer. Father, in this moment, Lord, I want you to speak through me. God, I, I have no interest in coming up and sharing my own opinion or thinking of ways to try and communicate it. Lord, I just need your Holy Spirit to speak straight through, straight through every barrier, every lie, straight through every wall that we've put up, straight into our hearts, God. Speak to us today, Lord. We're here to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray, well say, amen, amen. Well, I wanna start off by saying that this trip, this, all of this wouldn't be possible if it hadn't been for just amazing leaders we have here at our church. Beginning, of course, with our pastor, Pastor Marco, who has, let's give a hand for our pastor, who has truly, truly valued just seeing leaders being raised up and poured into. And he really talks about, you know, seeing me as a, as a young boy. I've come to him over and over and over with my mess. And he's always been there to help me grow and just entrust me with this opportunity. I want to give you honor and, and thanks, Pastor. Thank you so much. But also our amazing missionary, Jerry and Julie, just did an amazing job on this trip. So awesome. And the whole team, my Aunt Janet and Mike, who just helped to put the whole thing together. I want to say thank you, guys. But I also want to say to the whole church is I know that we're seeing all these testimonies and these amazing things that have happened in Brazil. But one thing I feel really led to say is that you did not have to have gone to Brazil to get what God has for you today. I believe that God has a word for us today in this church, in this moment, that God has told me he's given to the body of Christ today so that we can experience the same power, the same freedom, the same love, the same move that we're seeing all these stories happen, we can see it in our lives today. So I want to encourage you, don't think that, oh, because I wasn't on a mission trip, because I didn't sign up, I missed out. You missed out on nothing. God is still here today. The same God that was moving out there in Brazil, he is here in this room today and he loves you. And the great thing about God is that he knows you so intimately. And he knows your life closer than anyone else does. He knows the pain you're going through. He knows the struggles you're enduring. He knows the fight it took you just to get here. He knows what's going on in your home. He knows what's happening in your mind. He knows what you're dealing with in your heart. And the great thing about the love of our God is that he knows this and yet he still wants you and wants you to be free. How awesome is that? There's a scripture I want us to turn to. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 through 11. And this scripture came about because as we were on our trip, right in the halfway point on the Brazil trip, it, it seems to happen on missions trip, right there in the middle, like halfway through, there was a big weariness or heaviness that happened on the team. It was like there was like this, this breaking point where everyone was just going through something. It, it just seemed like they were fighting certain things or things started coming up and surfacing. Like they were just going through a fight and we recognized that this was happening. And in that moment, we couldn't just ignore that we were facing that breaking point. We had to address it. And the, God gave us this scripture in this word. And this scripture is in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. This is what it says. Now I'm glad I sent it. Not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. It was a kind of sorrow God wants his people to have so you will not harm by us in any way. Now I know we're hearing that scripture right now and we're thinking in our mind, I have never seen that before. That there's a kind of sorrow that God wants us to have or there's a kind of pain that, that helped us you know, you want to know what that pain moment is or that, that sorrow moment? It's that moment of realization. It's that moment of reckoning that we all come to where we have to make the decision and say, are you tired of just going through this over and over and over? Some of you today have walked in with an addiction that no one knows of. And the question for you today is, are you, are you tired of going through it over and over and over? Some of you have been bound by this pain that someone has caused you. The question is, are you ready to let that go? But what happens is when we come to that moment, it's so scary because we're faced with this pain of 
realization that there's something that I need to let go to God. There's something I need to give him. But what we tend to do, what the enemy causes us to do at times, is we tend to find something that numbs that pain in our life. You guys know what I'm talking about. We look for things that, that cause us to forget that we're dealing with this pain or that we're dealing with this addiction or that I'm dealing with this unforgiveness or I'm dealing with this hurt. We, come, we run into that moment. And so we run to things and we sweep it under the rug or we turn a blind eye or we run away from it. And we don't want to know that I need help. But in that moment, I pray that this pain, this sorrow this, that this scripture is talking about, this thing that God is saying, I want you to walk in that moment and face it so that I can get you through it. I pray that as we face that today, that you will not leave the same out of this room, but that every bondage and every lie the enemies put in our mind will be left right up here at the altar. And we'll say once and for all, I'm not walking home with this thing anymore. The re there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you were invited by a friend or a family member. There's a purpose for you being in this room. And it's because God wants you to experience his love and his freedom once and for all so that you can put to death and put to shame all the tactics the enemy has put on your life. Come on, how many want that in their life today? So it says in the scripture, there's this type of sorrow. It's a kind of sorrow or in other words, a kind of pain that God wants his people to have. Verse 10, it says, for that kind of sorrow that God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. You guys know what I'm talking about. In, in my life, I remember I was dealing with a, just an just a inner turmoil um, and I had just been struggling with just lustful thoughts. I was just struggling with just feeling real, just real dirty about myself. And, and, and I remember I was just like, you know, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to keep moving forward. Forgive me. I'm going to keep moving forward. And I remember one time, this is, I was, I was listening to Pastor Marco preach a message. This is at our last campus. And he preaches a message out of the book of James. And he says, he talks about how let there be weeping and sorrow for the sin we've committed. And in that moment, it hit me that I had never really been sorry or faced the pain of the way I had been living and I was just going about in life and I would numb the pain, I would forget about it and I would just keep going through the motions, but I wouldn't change. And after that sermon, I remember I went home, I cried all the way home, I locked the door and I cried and I cried in my room and I asked the Lord to help me and forgive me and I was so sorry and he set me free right there in my room. And never again, he set me free in that moment. But in that moment, I could have done one or two things. I could have come face to face with that pain and ran in a direction to numb it and to forget about it and to not face it. Or I could have allowed God to walk me through it and say, son, it's time to face this. And it's time to put this away. It's time to put away the sin. It's time to put away the bondage. It's time to put away whatever unforgiveness you're holding against your dad. It's time to put that away right here and right now, once and for all, because I have a new life for you. I have a purpose for you. I have a destiny for you. I have, I have something fresh for you. I have joy for you. I have all of this for you. But we can't get there unless you finally face this pain. It's time to face it and let it go. So it says in... Verse 10, it said, God wants us to experience it, which it leads us away from sin and it results in salvation. It results in deliverance. It results in freedom. It results in healing. It results in a brand new start. And then it says right here, there's no regret for that kind of sorrow. There's no regret for it. You know what I regret? It's hearing God and ignoring him. I've regretted it over and over and over. I've regretted God telling me or, or showing something in my heart and asking me to just give it to him and telling him, no, I'll keep it. You know what I regret is, is hearing, the love, uh, hearing about the love of God, how he can set me free and not following him. You know what I regret? Hearing about all these testimonies or hearing about how uh, these, hearing about this discipleship or how I can grow here at this church. You know, how many times have, you heard, have we heard Pastor Marco come up here and say, let's go to starting at the way. Join the power of 12. You know, the only thing, the only thing I can regret is 
is not following the instruction. Because, you know, there's power behind the instruction. There's freedom in it. But you know what the Bible says right here? There is no regret for. There is no regret for allowing that, that, that pain or that, that realization, that moment of reckoning in my life and saying, God, I'm sorry, and I just can't take this anymore, and I'm ready to turn back to you, and I'm giving it all up for you. There is no regret for that kind of repentance, or there is no regret for turning back to God. Have you ever met anyone who got totally set free from bondage and regretted it? Like, man... I was so addicted to drugs and now I'm not. I can't stand this. I blew all my money on drugs and now I have all this money saved up. This is the worst. I've never met anyone that has been set free that regrets it. I have ne you'll never meet an on fire Christian who is so, who's so happy that God loves them and set them free. You'll never meet someone who, is, who understands how much God loves them. You'll never meet anyone that has got set free from unforgiveness in their heart or anger or abuse or a gang, a gang lifestyle or drugs or an addiction. You'll never meet anyone who's got set free and says, I regret it. What God is saying is you won't regret giving it to me. You won't regret letting go of it. You won't regret facing this pain. You won't regret it because I love you and I will guide you through this. You won't regret it. He says there's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, that results in spiritual death. You know, there's a kind of sorrow that the world gives us, or pain the world gives us. And that kind of pain, it doesn't come with change. It, it's a kind of pain that I have to numb myself because I know that if I don't, I'm going to be dealing with this pain over and over, and there is no hope for change for me. It's a kind of pain that, that, that we know that we're going to go right back to the old things. That's the worldly kind of pain. But the godly sorrow, the godly pain is that moment of reckoning, is that moment I had in my room where I was crying my eyes out and saying, God, I'm so sorry, and I'm finally ready to let this go and give it all to you. And God's saying, that's exactly what I wanted, and I'm ready to take that from your heart and give you something brand new. I did not regret that. You know, I felt like I lost like 100 pounds in that moment. I, I, like, I didn't need the gym after that. I was, I was floating. It was, it was what the Bible calls like a spiritual high. It was, it was crazy. It was like, I felt so free. I felt like there was a weight on my back that I was carrying everywhere. You ever felt that before? You carry it at work. You carry it at home. You carry it when you came to church today. Someone invited you or, you, or you, maybe you've been coming and you carried it in with you today. I know exactly what you're going through. And God is saying, it's time to give that to me. Let's face the music. Let's face the pain. It's time to give that to me and to let it all go. I believe there's someone in here who's saying that. And so now he says, just see what this produces in you. Verse 11, it produces such earnestness. That was a word I had to look up. <laughs> Which means sincere conviction. When I, when, I, when I allow that kind of pain that God leads me into and, and, and to deal with that, that moment of reckoning and, and to deal with it, it, it gives me a sincere conviction about the way I need to live. It produces such concern to clear yourselves. In other words, it produces an urgency in your life, an urgency to serve God, an urgency to grow, an urgency to sign up for this growth track, not the next wave. I'll wait for the next one. Nope, we'll sign up this Tuesday. I'll be there this Tuesday. An urgency. An urgency to join a power of 12. An urgency to get involved. An urgency to follow the plan that God has been presenting to you. It produces an indignation, which is also a word I had to look up because I'm not a human dictionary. But it said, in a human uh, indignation, it says righteous anger. It's like a righteous anger. You know, when I repent, when I change and I turn to God, it produces this righteous anger within me. You know what that basically is? It's like, it's like God puts this inner, I would say, defense system in your heart against sin. And so now, now, now you don't have to worry about, oh, man, like I'm going to be pulled from both sides. Like God's going to be pulling me, but then the drugs are going to be pulling me. God's going to pull me on this side, but then the, 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 the lust is going to pull me on this side. Like, oh, it's going to be hard to just say no. 
But what God is saying is I can produce a righteous anger within you. I can produce a disgust to sin and say, no, I don't want that anymore. I don't like what it did to me. I don't like how it had me bound. I don't like what it did to my family. I don't like how it broke up, broke apart my marriage. I don't like what it did between me and my kids. I don't like that. And I don't, I don't want that in my life anymore. God can produce within you a righteous anger or like a disgust or a, a defense and, and a pushing off of all the sin that have caused so much pain in your heart. He can produce that in you. He can produce that. He can produce an alarm, such alarm, it says. You know what alarm is? It's like it's me being totally aware and being totally on my toes at all times, not going to sleep. You know what a big problem is, is that, that, we, we, that we come to church, we get on fire, and as soon as we drive home, we let our guard down. And we're not paying attention we're not paying attention that we, we're opening doors to the enemy in all these different little areas of our life. Sometimes we need to let go of, uh, 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 of, of things in our home. Right now we have, it's like we've created places in our home for the enemy to just kick back and we're not even aware of it. It's like we open the door for the enemy to come in and do what he wants in our family and we're not, we can't even see it. We're blind to it. But what God is saying is with this kind of change and this repentance and when you face that pain and when you come to me, I will give you an alarm system in your spirit. And now you'll see something you go, wait, hang on. That right there, that has to go. That can't stay in my home anymore. Why? It's innocent. Everyone does it. I see other Christians doing it. Not in my home. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm not going to let this take out my son. I'm not going to let this take out my daughter. That has got to go. I got an alarm in me now. The devil's not going to creep in my house anymore because I got an alarm system. Every time the devil tries to come in, it's like, er, 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 nope, I saw that. Er, 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 nope, close that window. Er, er, nope. You're not coming in my house anymore. I got an alarm system in me. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called the fire of God. It's called conviction. It's called the power. I can see with God's eyes now. I can see with his power. I can see what he sees. I know it. He's got to go in the name of Jesus. Devil, you can't stay in my house anymore. You can't stay in my family. You can't stay in my mind. You can't bind up my ministry anymore. You can't bind up my destiny. You can't prevent me from doing what you've called, what God has called me to do. Devil, you cannot stop me from doing what God has purposed in my life because I'm going full force in what he's called me to do. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. I see all your little conniving little tricks, devil. You think I'm dumb? I ain't dumb. You think I'm a fool? I'm not dumb, devil. I see it all. I see you set that up to do this, to do this, to do this, to do that. I read your whole playbook. That's like, you know what? That didn't come from me. That came from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is saying, look, give me everything. Give me your pain. Give me your suffering. Give me your sin. Give me all of that because I want to give this to you. I want to give this to you. I want to give you such authority over the enemy that you call all of his shots. You know exactly what he's up to and you're like, nope. Not this time, devil. You tried that. It wouldn't be work last time, but it's not going to work again. Come on. How many believe that? I'm going to go to the next scripture. I want to go to Isaiah 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, it says, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you. And therefore he exalts himself to show mercy. You know what God is saying here? He's made it his own purpose to, get, to show you mercy and to show you his grace. He's made it his own purpose to make sure he does whatever he can to give you his love and his blessing, something we don't deserve, and to take all your sin. He's made it his own purpose to do that. For the Lord is a God of justice. Look at where it says in verse 19, I'm just skipping ahead for the sake of time. He says, he will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. He will be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. In that moment, it says, as soon as he hears it, he answers you. That moment, you know that God has no hesitation. God doesn't do the way we do. You know, someone comes up to us and tells us sorry, and we're like, mm-hmm. I know. I know you did that. You shouldn't have did that. You know, you were wrong for that. Hmm. I'll talk to you later. 
Hmm. <laughs> God doesn't do that. We do that. God doesn't. The Bible says right here that as soon as he hears your cry, as soon as, it doesn't even say that, that when you cry, he will eventually come. It's the moment instantaneous that that cry musters up in your spirit. He's already there. He hears your cry and he answers it. I feel like in this room right now, there's just that cry is mustering up in your heart. Someone in here today is finally saying, this is the moment of reckoning in my life. This is that moment of realization for me that I'm gonna put away everything that the enemy has tried to store up in my life and I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it to you, God. Right now, it's not even like you don't have to wait for the altar, it's happening in your heart right now. There's some people right now that are crying and, and, and God, is, God sees your tears and he hears your heart and he's saying, I'm with you right now. He's not waiting for the end of the service. He's with you right now. He hears you. He knows your thoughts. He knows how you're responding. And he's saying, I'm with you right now. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teacher. You know what he's saying? Though it was God that led you to that point. Though it was the Lord that said, it's time for you to walk into this moment, to this place of reckoning, to deal with this once and for all. I know it causes pain. I know it's, it hurts, but it's time to deal with this. It's time to let this go. It's time to stop numbing the pain. It's time to stop turning a blind eye. It's time to stop ignoring this. It's time once and for all to lay this at my feet, to turn back to me. And then he says in this moment, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. Can I get, uh, uh, Jace, can you come up here really quick? It's like the Lord he has a plan for you. And it's like your destiny. This is you, okay? Your destiny's over there. But there's this huge wall here. And every time you look at this wall, on it is painted all your sin. On this wall is painted the pain that your father caused you. On this wall is written all the things that you're dealing with, the addiction you know you have, the hidden sin, all these things. And the enemy, all he does, he's trying to get you to look at the wall and run in the other direction. He wants you to see all of this. He wants you to see your life painted on this wall and run away, run as far as, far as you can in the opposite direction and get away from this. Because I don't want to see what's really going on behind my heart. But you know what the Lord says in this scripture? He's saying, this is the way, walk in it. He's saying, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the Lord. He's saying, your destiny is on the other side of this. Your purpose is on the other side of this. Miracles are on the other side of this. Your joy is on the other side of this. Your breakthrough is on the other side of this. And no longer are you going to let this wall keep you from walking into your purpose and your destiny. He's saying, son, he's saying, daughter, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. It's time to deal with this. I know you think that every time you feel pain looking at this wall, it's, it's, it's the devil's pain. No, I, I, I'm leading you to a godly sorrow. I'm leading you to this moment to walk up to this, to deal with this once and for all, to put away the sin, to put away the torture, to put away the lies, to put away the insecurity, to put everything away. This is the way, walk in it. And we're going to get through this together. You're not going to stop, and I'm not going to let you stop. In Jesus' name, I won't let you stop. Stay right here. He says, then you will defile your carved idols that are overlaid with silver and your gold-plated images. He's saying all the things that you've idolized, all the things that you ran to, all the things that you worship instead of God, all the stuff that you invest your time in that have, that have prevented you from seeking God. He's saying all those things. He's saying you will defile those. You will have the authority to scatter them as unclean things. And you will finally say to them, be gone. Be 
gone in Jesus' name. So now God gives you the authority to bum rush through everything the enemy is trying to put up against you and say, be gone. You've been dealing with depression, finally time to say, be gone. Have you been dealing with severe anxiety and the doctors are saying you need to take pills? It's time for you to finally say, be gone. Have you been dealing with the sin that you feel like you can't get rid of, that you feel like you can't break on your own? God is saying he's going to give you the authority to finally speak to that saying and say, be gone. Depression, be gone. Suicide, be gone. Demonic thoughts, be gone. Unforgiveness, be gone. In the name of Jesus, be gone in Jesus' name. And if you ever feel like you're afraid, God says in one more scripture, he says this. He says in Isaiah, we can all stand to our feet, let's stand. He says this in Isaiah 41, 13, for I will hold you by your right hand. Oh, this is your right hand, whoops. I'm like, your other hand. I will hold you by your right hand. And he says this, I, the Lord, your God, and I will say to you, do not be afraid. I am here to help you. You feel like you can't conquer that? It's all good because I got you. I will kick over every single demon. I will crush the head of every snake. I will destroy every bondage. Remember the, the lie that you've been believing that you can't do it? I will kick that thing down myself. I will take you by the right hand and I will walk you all the way through. You got this because I'm here to help you. It's time for change. It's time for breakthrough. It's time to say be God to those old things. I got you, son. We're going to get through this. This is the way. Walk in it. This is the way. Walk in it. This is the way. Walk in it. Come on, if you believe that, just lift your hands in his place. If you're saying, I need that freedom, I need that breakthrough, I, this is my moment of reckoning. This is my moment to say, I'm done with the old me and I need a new start. I need a new forgiveness. I need new life. If that's you today and you want that moment and you're ready to face it, I want you to come up out of your seat and you want to give your heart completely over to Jesus today and you want to surrender everything. I want you to make your way out of your seat. And as we do, let's give them a big round of applause as they start coming forward. Come on, church, let's hear it for them. They're coming up. They're coming up. Come on, I know there's a lot more than that. I know there's a lot more people that are saying today, I'm done with the old lifestyle. I'm done with the cycle. I'm done dealing with this pain or this addiction. I'm done dealing with the lie. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to come back. Where's the worship team? I need the worship team out here. Come on, church, it's here. They're still coming. They're still coming. Give them a round of applause as they come up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Today's a day of change. Today's a day for breakthrough. Today's a day for a new start. Today's a day for a new beginning. Today's a day for peace in your mind once and for all. Church, we need to encourage them. They're coming up. They're coming. There's nothing more important than this moment right here where lives are being changed forever. Hearts are being restored and renewed. Nothing will be the same again. Anybody else out there, you want to receive Jesus. You want to turn. You want to give it all to him. You want to give him your heart. And in this moment, you want that moment to just no longer go back to a worldly pain, but you want to go and finally surrender everything. God does not want you to continue on in a cycle that has you bound. God wants you free because he loves you. Right now, for everyone that's up here, I know some people are already just getting a touch from God. Pastor Marco, God gave our pastor a, a vision or a word that there's right now, there's for our church, for, for us, the most important thing we can do as believers is to follow, to be discipled. What God is teaching us in our church is that we're not just fans. We are not just coming up here for hype. We are up here because we're declaring that I, my life is gonna change forever. And I'm no longer gonna walk as the same person. I'm gonna walk like a new person. How do we do that? 
We don't expect you to come up with it all by yourself. So we as a church, we're gonna help you through that whole process. And it's through that class called Starting at the Way. The person in front of you is gonna pray with you, but they're also gonna help you get signed up for this class. And they're gonna help you join a Power of 12, which is a group of people that are like-minded, that are studying the word, they're gonna help you to grow. And as you pray, don't leave this altar without taking action on your next step and following the Lord. This is the Lord saying, this is the way, walk in it. Amen. I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. I want everyone to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I'm sorry for all the sin I've done. I turn back to you. Forgive me for doing life my way. From this moment forward, I wanna do it your way. God, I ask you to cleanse me, to set me free from all bondage that has been holding me back. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose from the dead so that I can have victory. So I receive that today. I put my faith in you, Jesus, and I give it all to you. Thank you for loving me and for taking care of me and setting me free. In Jesus' name I pray and we all say amen and amen.